Hi guys, welcome back. Now in the last video we took a look at what I'll be using for headgear or camera gear that will be on my person for POV. Um, this isn't really, like I say, I've said this many times, I'm not going out to make myself or try and make myself the best new airsoft gameplay content creator. That's not my intention. But, you know, I've picked up a, a scope cam as well from Runcam and it to, let's say I'm covering a gun. You know, for example, I'm covering the gas blow back 249. I've got it on the bench. I'm showing you some upgrades. I can show you some footage um, of how it shoots. That'll be the run cam, um, run cam's perspective. So you'll be able to see how the flight path of the BBs come out. And then the head cam is basically just so you can see what I see and experience, obviously, the recall and whatnot, and bits and pieces like that. So um, in the last video I put out, I covered the DJI Osmo Action 4, which I'll be using for the POV cam. And then for a scope cam slash gun cam, uh, I'll be using the run cam, and this is the scope cam 2 4K. Uh, the reason I've gone for the scope cam 2 4K, it's a bloody mouthful, isn't it? Um, it's just because the later releases up from run cam, I've heard those that do or record a lot of footage, um, they basically said don't go for those newer ones. This is probably the best camera to go for. Whether that's right or wrong, who knows? But this is what I picked up. I was going to order it directly from Runcam, but every time I tried to order on their website, um, it just wouldn't go through for some reason. And, you know, coming from China or wherever they are, it'll take a bit of time to get here. I actually noticed there was a shop here in the UK that had them in stock, which was patrol based. I just put it on Google, thought if someone's got it stuck in the UK, I'll order it from them. And it came next day. So it comes in a black box like this. And it's very simple packaging. You have a very brief manual. We have the camera itself, which we'll go through in just a moment. And then underneath here, we have a USB-C, USB to a USB-C style cable. It's like one of the flat ribbon styles. Now I've got tons of these, so that's not really important. Um, so we'll put that away. The little instruction book that you get basically just shows you what buttons are, where you put the card in, how to charge it, how long the charging normally takes, low battery reminders, what type of cards you can use. Now, I do have a couple of 128 gig micro SDs. One thing I would like to know is why some companies like this put capacity up to 128 with, look, you can get micro SD cards up to one terabyte now. Um, I have bought some 256 gigabyte cards, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to use those or if it's not recommended. If you guys know more about the camera ins and outs than I do, um, why would they say capacity up to 128? Is it just because that's what was available when they made the camera? I'm not too sure. I'd like to use a 256, but I've got a couple of 128s in case that's not possible. So it just goes over the basic operation, um, how to start recording, how to stop recording, which we'll get to in just a moment. How to open and uh, close the Wi-Fi, force shutdown, abnormal status, blah, blah, blah. You connect to the computer, tells you where to get the app from. Tells you the default SSID for the wireless and the passwords. I'm pretty sure all these are the same. Um, and then it's just in Chinese on the opposite side. So yeah, simple as that. The other reason why I went for this camera after you know researching and trying to watch as many people on YouTube cover certain things. And um, they'll do a very good job, but they, they're also sometimes not as in-depth as one would want. Um the other plus side to this camera is, and this is the issue I had with my scope cam, which I do with that, it might be downstairs. Um, but the issue I had with the scope cam was I had so many instances where I thought I'd turned it on when I'd actually turned it off. So it wasn't super clear, especially when you're out on the field. Um, most of the times, went to get into the action, flipped the switch, you know, discovered that I recorded all the in-between games where my guns pointed at the floor and then as I thought I was turning it on, I was actually turning it off and got absolutely nothing. So this is the camera, Scope Cam 2 4K. Very nice. It's made out of like machined aluminium. Very nice feeling to it. It's, it's quite uh, heavy to be honest. Let's see if we can quickly measure the weight for you. And the Scope Cam 2 4K is overloaded, so it's over 200 grams. 
because it's overloading the uh, scale. Don't know if I have the other scale. Oh, I do actually. A little uh, cooking scale thing here. So we'll see if we can get it on this one. Wait till I could go to zero. And it comes in at just over, so 208 grams. So it's a bit of weight there. Um, it's going to add some weight to the front of your rifle, so you have to take that into consideration. There are lighter options out there. There's do-it-yourself do it options. Um, I went for the 40 mil, not the 25. And you know, I'm sure there's going to be loads of people in the comments that say, "Oh, you, you don't use a lot of snipers compared to you know gas blowbacks and stuff." That is a mistake. It could be, but I'd like to think that if I'm at such a distance where you guys can't see. Um, or it's too close for you to see the BBs hitting whatever I'm shooting at. I'd like to think that the Osmo is going to pick it up in 4K. So this camera can actually shoot 4K, 2.7K, um, or 1080. So 1080 will do up to 120 frames a second, which can do slow-mo. Uh, 2.7 comes in at 60 frames, and then 4K comes in at 30. Now for a, a scope cam, as far as I'm aware... Um, you probably want to have higher than 30 feet, uh, 30 frames per second, just because the it's not going to track the BB very well at that lower frame rate. So I'll probably go down to the 2.7 at 60 um, and see what that's like. It might be a good sort of uh, middle ground between the two. So back to my point on turning this thing on, this thing is super simple. So let's say you're getting ready for a game, they've called game on, you flip to your action camera on and your scope cam and you literally just push this forward and it just vibrates, which you can feel through rail systems, and you'll feel it through your, your rifle or your SMG or whatever you're using as it does that. And then that's recording. And then to stop, flip it back, it'll vibrate again, and it turns off. So it's simple. It's foolproof. Um, so that's another reason why I went for this setup. You've got a USB-C port at the back there, and then you've got your slot for your micro SD memory cards so they go in upside down like that and slot that in there so super simple let's see if we can attach this to something so you can in the the app on your phone you can download the app it connects through wireless the reason why i reckon it connects through wireless and not bluetooth is literally because when you're using bluetooth and i found this out speaking with a couple of electronics guys years ago when i was going to start doing mosfets um, if you use Bluetooth, you have to pay a license for using it, as far as I'm aware, where wireless you don't. So it's just, I imagine, a cheaper way to produce them. If you're running it on something very short like this, and again, this comes to a very cool feature on the mount. So you've got a screw mount, but then you can flip up this little handle here, and you can use that to turn it on so it's toolless um, in its fitment. It's got a spring-loaded latch on the rail clamp so you just take it push that in slide it onto your replica goes on like that and then you just spin that uh, screw once you've got it tight enough like that you just flip that latch in and it's out of the way so this is insanely light so you can feel it more than in something else because it's pitching all the weight to the front of the SMG. Um, the 25 mil version of it will have a slightly smaller um, size because the lens isn't as long, so it might it might accommodate fitting onto your rails a little bit better. If you're doing a lot of CQB or close quarter stuff, the 25 mil will probably be a better option for you. Uh, what can we fit this onto? Let's put it on. The spear because I know people are going to want me to record some footage of this so I imagine I would have to remove the front sight yeah so it's going to catch that so I'd remove the front sight and then I'd just run it up front like that what I'd probably do is run it quite all the way front just so it clears as much as the suppressor as possible but just for demonstration purposes you can shove it on there if I didn't have the red the um, iron sight there I could fit it wherever I wanted to so a little bit further back, if I wanted to set the balance of the rifle up more to the rear, 
you know, it's not big at all, is it really? It's not out of the way. I'm uh, ready to go into the game. They call game on, we're running. I flip that switch forward. I can feel that all the way into the pistol grip of the rifle, which is a really nice feature. Record your stuff, and then when you come to it, just remember to turn it off. Turn it off, and away you go. So I have seen a couple of people um, do some tests on these. I think they might have been recording at 1080, um, but I saw one guy, and he just let it record continuously for four and a half hours, I think it was. So they do have a very good battery life. I imagine you can charge these as you use them. Um, most people that I've spoke to and that I know will just use it as it is, and then let's say they break for lunch in the day, they'll just plug a power bank in just to top it up. Um, what a lot of people have said as well is 128 gig cards will fill up completely um, before the battery runs out. So that is your bottleneck. Maybe at lunchtime, put it on charge, pop a card out, pop another card in. Uh, with the battery case for the Osmo, um, there's some storage in there for extra cards, that's good. So this is a setup I'll be using, a mixture of Runcam and DJI. Let me know down in the comments what you guys know, if you've got any tips or tricks for both myself and the viewers. So if you've got any tips and tricks or hacks for these things, pop them in the comments, and then people that find the video can scroll down after hearing me say this, and hopefully you guys have left some useful stuff there. Share the knowledge, guys. It does help everyone else. So if you're getting into a bit of, um, you know, airsoft content creating footage, whatever you want to do, you want to upload it to YouTube, um, I think the most important cameras you probably need are an action camera and a scope camera. Um, depending on what you do. If you're doing more CQB, then are probably the action camera is more um, of a necessity off, straight off the, off the bat. If you're doing a lot of woodland and long range engagements, I imagine this would probably come into its own a little bit more just so you can record the BBs hitting the opposition and people tend to like to tune in and watch that stuff. So I'm going to not drag this out as long as I did the Osmo video, but thanks for tuning in. If there's any accessories you guys think I should get or anything like that for this, let me know down in the comments below. A like and subscribe goes a long way. And of course, as always, from me and from Bench, we'll see you in the next video.